I was considering starting up a whole new account and going through the new um, player experience. I'm still debating doing that. Um, I might look at a way to do that somehow. But I did a top five video uh, a few weeks ago. So go and check that out if you are a new player. It will help you with sort of top five tips on sort of do's and don'ts on what to do at the start of the game. So I thought I'd just expand on that a bit for new players and talk about some things. Not do's and don'ts, but more like what to focus on rather than um, top five tips. So quite similar in a way, but something a bit different. I think the priority as a new start when you're starting the game is resources. Um, Energon, Alloy super important you'll use that throughout the game no matter what level you are at really really important and the easiest way to get energy on an ally is to keep raiding every day uh, raiding other bases and getting that energy on an ally and upgrading your base upgrading your bots now at lower levels up to around hq 12 i would say you won't get attacked much and so you'll tend to find you keep that energy on an ally and so as soon as you get it spend it don't keep it in reserve because if you do get attacked then you'll probably lose it all so keep spending that energy on and ally but once you get to hq 12 maybe a bit higher than that you'll start to get attacked quite often from other players and that's where you need to be careful that you're not fulfilling your storage and not leaving it overnight and then come back in the morning to an empty storage and you've wasted all that time you can get in a trap of trying to get medals don't bother. They don't mean anything. They'll get you some cyber coins eventually, but you'll naturally get medals just from trying to get energy on and ally. But I would not be looking as a new player to try and get medals. It's not something you need to focus on. Concentrate on them resources. It's really important. Don't bother with two star bots. I honestly wouldn't even bother leveling them. Now, there is a campaign for a two star Bumblebee, a two star Optimus, and I think you have to do that as part of the, the sort of initial process don't use them don't upgrade them don't bother with them at all at the start i would focus on three star bots but i wouldn't put any spark into them at all literally leave them at level one these three stars they'll do you well to fill some squads at the start but for new players nowadays you'll find you get four stars quite quickly every event normally has around two and a half thousand four star shards for about 10k points now if you're a new 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 player you can't be expected to do them 10k events. It's going to be really, really hard when you get about 100 points per battle with not a lot of bots. But don't worry, you'll get there quite quickly. Um, for alliance events, it's really important to join a decent alliance. And it's really hard as a new player to get in a decent alliance. I see new players asking to get into one of the top five alliances. It ain't going to happen. But what you can do is you can sort of pair up with people that are maybe slightly higher than you. I sort of explained that you're a new player and that you're trying to find a, a foothold in the game. You're dedicated. Now, if you are dedicated to doing your bit for the Alliance and helping, most alliances, well, not most, but most, you know, lower level alliances will take people on to fill their ranks. And if you are a person that's going to do what you say you're going to do and do your commitments and, you know, take part in events and help out, then you'll find that you get resources quite quickly. But it's all about your dedication to the game. If you're not dedicated to the game, if you want to enjoy your weekends completely and without touching this game, this game sadly isn't for you. It is one of those games that takes up a big chunk of your weekend, um, especially at the start when you're trying to grind it out. And, you, and especially if you're free to play and you haven't got coins to speed things up. Coins obviously helps a lot to speed things up in the game. And cyber coins is probably the rarest resource in the game. So, if you do get coins, just be careful with them. I have gone through it in my top five um, tips how to use them cyber coins. So, go and check that out, but just be a bit more careful with them. Now, when it comes to events, like I said, make sure you're doing your commit. I can't, I can't, I can't say that enough. It's probably the most important thing in the game is doing events, doing your commitment, and doing your part to get resources. After that. I think an important part is raids for new players. For higher level players, we don't really go with raids that much. We don't really take part in them that much. They're very easy for us. But for lower level players, you get Shanix. So by getting Shanix, you can get some decent rewards, which will help you get through the game. Um, you can get some, obviously, chips. You can get some XP. But the important thing is you can get Spark. 
So if you're taking part in those um, raids, you can get some sparks to top up your combiners, your combats and your bots. Uh, all are relevant in the game, all is important. And so I would probably spend your Shanix on that uh, to try and get your bots leveled. As I said earlier, don't bother with two stars. Keep your spark, your three stars low. I would level them, but not the spark part. When you get four stars, I would invest everything into them. I would equip your best combats um, onto four stars. I would put the most spark into four stars. And I put the most time into four stars. Your four star bots will be relevant for a long, long time in the game. With eventually leading to five stars. But you can still use four stars in a lot of squads. So as you start off, if you're not going to power level and spend you'll find that you're running full squads. And you the more squads you have, the easier it is to get points. And so try and fill them squads up with decent bots. At the start, it'll be mostly three stars with a four star here or there. As you progress, you'll have a few four stars with a lot of three stars. But I think within six to nine months, you'll start having squads of four stars and you'll have to level them, which obviously takes a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of spark. And so concentrate on four stars. Don't waste your spark on them three stars and two stars. And you'll find that you start getting a bit of a foothold in the game. You'll enjoy it more because you're doing more points in events. You can get better prizes. And it starts to snowball from there where because you can do more points and get more prizes, you can invest in your bots better because you're investing in your bots better and more. It means you can do more events. And it's a constant cycle. Now, in... YouTube videos from a lot of the top players, a lot of top content creators, you'll hear us talk about wars a lot. Now, at the top level of the game, that is how we judge ourselves. We don't judge ourselves so much on points in events because at that point, you're probably quite flush with resources. You don't really need them resources. All you really need is new bots and money, if I'm honest with you, to be a top, top, top player. Now, there's no reason why you can't get there with a lot of grinding. I've known a few free-to-play players to be really top players in the game, but it literally is a lot, a lot of effort, a lot of dedication, a lot of time to the game. Now, top players, like I said, focus on wars. As a new player, don't bother with wars at all. I'm not Listen, I'm not saying join an alliance and don't take part, but what I'm saying is don't worry if you can't take part and don't worry if you can't reach that level yet, a lower level. War rewards are great. But at lower levels, you'll find that most alliances don't really bother with wars too much. Most most top alliances will war every single day, pr pretty much seven days a week. Most lower level alliances will war on one or two days, most likely. And so try and take part. It's a, it's a good mechanism just to get used to the game. But for wars, you're literally taking your best bot into battle to try and beat someone on a PvP one-off and try and beat it and there's five bases to beat now like i said at a lower level it's more important to do events it's more important to do raids really really important until you get to higher levels where then you are judged by wars but at lower levels you are literally judged by your event points and that's what's really important so if you are struggling to find an alliance hit up on the discord server that was my top five tips to join that discord server there's always teams looking for players and go and join an active alliance that's the key word there it's the key word for players it's the key word for alliances is active if you are active in the game you'll enjoy the game and you'll do well if the alliance is active and everyone's doing their bit you'll start to find you get more resources because there's nothing worse than being in an alliance with people that aren't doing their part and people getting frustrated because they're putting a lot of effort in and other people aren't and you're not getting the rewards that you should be doing and people are getting the same rewards for doing very little so it's really really important that what you say you're going to do you are going to do and you go and do that and do your part for the alliance if you can do that if you can do all the things that i've said i think you'll really enjoy the game and it is a good game to get into like i said with most base building games it is a bit of a slog especially once you get towards the higher levels um, of the game. Um, time then becomes a bit of a bigger issue um, with some massive upgrade times of like two weeks even for some defences at the very height of the game. So you'll get there eventually, you will. But keep getting them resources through events, through raids, through you know, beating other people's bases in PvP 
um, and I find you'll get there in the end. But I hope you enjoyed these uh, few uh, tips for new players. And we're going to do some more of these things um, for new players. More little tips and things like how-to guides. Um, go and check out my best bots. I do them regular where I talk about the best bots in the game, the best combats in the game, the best combiners in the game. And if you're a new player and you're looking to invest in some combiners and bots and you don't know which ones to invest in, please go and check out your content creators, whichever it may be, um, on what they think are the best bots. We generally know what we're talking about and generally all agree as well on what are the best bots in the game. We might find little niche ways of using bots and methods do change. But generally, if we say this bot is top tier, it will be top tier for quite a while. And you know you can invest in that bot and get good use out of it. There's nothing worse than investing in a bot and to find out that it's pretty useless and there's not much you can do with it. Now, when you first start the game, most four stars are useful. But again, we're talking a bit later levels you'll find that certain four stars are very useful and certain four stars are slightly useful. So I hope you enjoyed those uh, few tips. Um, and like I said, subscribe uh, for more. And we'll be going through some more top tips for newer players.